What's going on folks, welcome back to the party. Over the past couple of days, I've been compiling information to make this video, and I want to take this opportunity to give a proper introduction to the upcoming MMORPG known as Broken Ranks. Broken Ranks is an isometric medieval MMORPG being developed by White Moon Games. This is a small dev team of 20 people, and the backbone plus majority of the systems for Broken Ranks are being built off its predecessor known as Pride of Tyrant. This one's a 2D top-down game that plays very similarly to browser-based games such as Adventure Quest or Dragon Fable, and has even had comparisons made to the original Baldur's Gate. Pride of Tyrant has been alive for almost 10 years and has a humongous amount of content and history being transferred over to Broken Ranks. There will be a collection of things that will be unavailable on launch, but for the majority of their systems, they should work the same way or have improvements made to them. So to start off, we'll want to talk about the world itself. Broken Ranks starts off by throwing you into the journey of a Tynarian who is forced to leave their homeland due to the invasion by the Utorian hordes. Just for reference, the Utorian seems to be the orc faction of this game from what I've seen so far. And Broken Ranks has a wide open world filled with tons of different interactions between the NPCs, the world itself, and other players. For the combat and playstyle of this game, it functions very similar to the one I pointed out, Adventure Quest and Dragon Fable but it has some key differences that made Broken Ranks unique in its own ways. We execute combat through turn-based rounds and we are able to allocate what are known as action points to our defensive and offensive battle choices. You can set your melee, ranged, and magic defense separately and these will play a part in how effective you are dodging or defending against different attacks. On the flip side of that, you are able to choose your various attack and skill combinations and allocate your action points accordingly. When you allocate more, it increases the chance to hit with that ability. Each round has a preparation phase of 10 seconds allowing you to choose your options, and it's highly recommended that you utilize the predefined combat strategies that you can set before battle, so all that you need to do is press a button and you can pull up your save defense and offensive choices. A recommended setup to go with right from the get-go would be 2 points per defense option, and then allocate the rest to your attack. So 2 melee defense, 2 range, 2 magic, and then at least 3-4 to four attack options with 2 points each, unless you want to change that up a bit. Another thing to keep in mind is that since this is an MMORPG, you do have the option of grouping up with other players, whether it's PvE or PvP, and executing battle strategies together. Some things won't work the exact same as in the previous game I mentioned before, but I was reading a couple days ago about Pride of Tyrant how players were actually able to get bonus experience while being in a party. For class options, you have 7 choices total. The Barbarians, who are two-handed melee fighting brawlers with their primary attribute being strength and health, with the secondary being dexterity which helps you have a better chance at hitting your target. Next we have our Knights of the game who specialize in leading and supporting their teammates. These are more tanky characters that you'll be able to see in game and they'll even be able to block incoming attacks. We then have the Sheed and these are the melee brawlers of broken ranks as you can see by their combat gloves. For them your stats will probably lean more towards dexterity but take all of this with a grain of salt because I've only been playing Pride of Tyrant so far. After that we have Archers, self-explanatory but their main role in the previous game was to act as debuffers for their teammates, which means this can be a very powerful person to put in your party. Druid is followed up by that after. Here we have the primary healers and buff characters of the game, capable of restoring life alongside using nature to strike down the enemies. These guys will be shifted a little bit more towards the knowledge stat, followed by power and mana. The knowledge is going to be the caster version of dexterity which will be good to know going in. Voodoo comes after that, a pretty awesome looking dark wizard type of class. These guys also focus on debuffing but are known for their draining abilities plus powerful mental spells they conjure in combat. And the polar opposite of this class is followed up by the seventh and final class to talk about today, the Fire Mages. This class specializes in fire magic as the name suggests, but is also known for dishing out tons of damage and damage over time to completely obliterate their enemies. When it comes to the character race, our characters will be made only as humans, but we will be able to customize our character features in character creation. Broken Ranks will be playable on PC, Mac, your browser, iOS and Android, and according to a previous Q&A, they do have plans for a Steam release sometime in the future. As far as the localization and tech goes, we should have access to both US servers alongside EU based ones, and if you haven't already watched my last video, characters and guilds from Pride of Tyrant will be transferred over to Broken Ranks and put on their own servers. There will be fresh start servers for the rest of us, but if you happen to play the predecessor previously, your character would be transferable over. And you can also stay on the 2D Pride of Tyrant version if you want to. 
Progression wise, the max level should be around 140 if they're sticking to the original and some of our main forms of progression will be through main story quest lines, side quest lines, job tasks which are like grind quests or gather quests that we can complete and they have a cooldown, daily quest lines, grinding mobs of course although questing is probably going to be faster, many different random dynamic events to experience if they keep those systems in, dungeon content, and even rare elites that spawn throughout the world that are classified as champions. Everything I just listed also covers the majority of the player versus environment. For PvP, this will be an open world PvP game, however it should not be full loot if they stay true to the Pride of Tyrant. Instead we'll have different flagging zones similar to Albion Online, except we do not have a guaranteed chance of losing items if we go to a higher tier zone. There will also be zone protectors known as the pump masters if I understand correctly, and the main penalty we get as a result of death is the loss of experience and gold, but it's not super severe in any way unless you're dying repeatedly for hours on end. Alongside open world PvP, we also have PvP tournaments, a flagging system of course to go along with the open world PvP, guild wars similar to Black Desert where you are able to declare on other ones, and you will be able to gain bonuses for killing them in a fight. However, you can set your guild to peaceful mode if you don't want to ever be declared on, that way you can protect yourself from another guild that might want to target you. There is a criminal system known as Sadist, and it basically means that you can be attacked in all areas except green zones, and if you die in player vs player, you'll lose much more gold and experience than before. Tournaments and arenas are also featured in Broken Ranks, but on launch according to the FAQ, we may not see that option for the arena fights right away. As far as guilds go, there will be guild territory we can build up as well as other benefits for being in a guild such as access to guild pets. Combat pets will be a thing so if you don't want to team with other people or can't find people to team with, you can still take down content with a pet of your own. Crafting and item wise, there should be a trading marketplace if they do pull that system from Tyron, and there will be legendary items with an enhancement system so we can make use of that to upgrade our gear. Consumables will also be present along with gathering, you can sell materials to different NPCs or talk to them and trade those mats along with other required items to get something much better. We'll dig into all these systems as time goes on, but these are some of the basic things you can expect to see in this MMO. The last thing I'd like to briefly cover is the monetization system. Because the game is free to play, we'll most likely be seeing practices in the game that normally people would call pay to win or in the predecessor's case, pay to advance faster. They haven't fully revealed what will be available in the Broken Ranks cash shop, but if that's another thing they plan to pull from Tyron, then you can expect a premium membership that will give you bonuses like increased experience and lower death penalties, extra combat strategy loadouts, extra gold gain, etc. Just wanted to make sure I relayed that info and thank you folks as always for joining me today. Next couple videos will dive deeper into these individual systems like everything to expect from being in a guild or the full player versus environment or PvP systems, etc. Till then, catch you next time.